The Spurs lose a coin flip, and the city says, okay, Spurs, go play elsewhere. You are Locked On Spurs, your daily San Antonio Spurs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, this is Chris Sabat, and you're listening to Locked On Spurs with Jeff Garcia. Welcome back to Lockdown Spurs. We're here on the Lockdown NBA Network. I'm your host, Jeff Garcia, Spurs writer for Kids 5 San Antonio. Glad to have you back. Hey, hope you're having a great week. And look, the uh, weekend is slowly upon us. Hang on in there. We're almost there. Hey, thanks for making Lockdown Spurs your first listen each and every day. We are free and available wherever you get podcasts. You are the everydayers, and we like that you're with us here at Lockdown Spurs and the rest of the Lockdown NBA Network each and every day. So, yeah, as you heard, we're going to be talking about your silver and black and them losing another coin flip. We now know the Spurs odds at landing they pick one through seven. Did it really matter ultimately? We're going to be diving into that as well as the city of San Antonio slash Bear County has agreed to let the Spurs continue playing home games away from San Antonio for the next couple of seasons. What does that mean? Is it much to do about nothing or is this just slowly adding the heat to the boiling pot? Who was helping me today? He is Michael Jimenez of San Antonio Sports Star. By the way, we're doing video right now. Just me and Michael. You guys can't see this, but Mike has some very fancy headsets. He That's looks right. Like he's in a very nice background. There, he has two windows. Mike, I'm not dr- what's going I'm on, not buddy? Driving to the office, man. So I get to yeah. wear my headset at home. I feel pretty good about this. Yeah, yeah. We did a, a test, and uh, Mike, Mike. For those of y'all who know, Mike usually talks to me in the mornings on his way to work, and a lot of wind. Him picking up Starbucks. A lot of traffic. What else? A lot of traffic. But now we got him nice, clear, crisp, and he's raring to go. Mike is with San Antonio Sports Star. He is a co-host of Jimenez and Spence. A lot of crazy stuff going on there. I heard somebody uh, crop dusted the studio when y'all left the other day. Yeah. Spence tried to pin that one on me, man. I'm calling nonsense (laughs) on that. (laughs) <laughs> he'll be talking about his show and more in just a few minutes mike let's go ahead and dive into this let's start off with the coin flip heard around spurs world the nba uh tossed the coin up in the air did not land in the spurs favor that means the rockets who tied and the spurs who had the identical records uh well the rockets won the second worst record which is good yeah that makes sense the spurs now have the third worst record but still hold a 14% chance of winning the NBA draft lottery. Mike, let's go to break it down. When you heard the news, was there really much to do about nothing? They still have 14%. Well, I wanted the peace of mind of knowing that worst case scenario was going to be number six. Yeah. So I was a little bit disappointed because keep in mind, last season, the Spurs lost multiple coin flips as well, which is why we fell all the way to number 25 in the draft. Yeah. Uh, when we got Blake Wesley, we lost a, a coin flip to Milwaukee. We lost one to Philadelphia. And I'm not mistaken, we also lost one with the pick that Malachi Brunham was in, the number yeah. 20 pick. So the Spurs going out there losing what amounts to be in the fourth coin flip in 13 months. Um, wasn't surprised. Let me just say that. I wasn't surprised at all. But is it nothing? I can't say that it's nothing. Okay, There's a 93% chance that this was nothing. Okay, but there's a seven percent chance that <laughs> it's yeah. that it's something, right? So basically, what's going on? Houston, because they're considered to be the second worst record in the league, worst case scenario for them is drafting at number six. The Spurs' worst case is drafting number seven, but the odds of picking at number seven, the Spurs have a ninety-three percent chance of doing better than that. Okay, the yeah. Spurs have two thirds of a chance of, of of a percentage, you know, sixty-six percent. Mm -hmm. I'm picking in the top five. So it's not doom and gloom for the Spurs, but it would have been nice when it comes to peace in mind. They just had to win those last few games, right? They just had to. They won the last two of the last three or three of the the last five, something like that. Yeah, the Mavericks. They just had to win. Yeah, the Mavs flat out tanked. Spurs won one in Austin. All they had to do was just win one less, and the Spurs would not be in this situation. Nevertheless, yeah, I still think it's much to do about nothing. Uh, you know, th- if anything, it's just more superstitious, Michael, in the sense of the basketball gods didn't smile on the Spurs this time. What does that mean in just a few weeks? Are they not going to be smiling on the Spurs? Speaking of the Mavericks, who minutes, how much are you going to be upset if the Mavericks win it all? Can Dude, you imagine that would be because they tanked? 
Good I would be Lord. fascinated by that because they have a 3% chance of getting Wemby. You know, they have a 1 in 8 or a 1 in 9 chance, if yeah. I'm not mistaken, to be in the top four. And, uh, you know, they got fined, what was it, $750,000 yeah. because they tanked that game against the, uh, who was it against? It was like the Bulls or something like that. Yeah. And and they, they were top 10 protected. So, um, yeah. Well, uh, well, here's now, the thing, it is possible. It is well, possible no. they could get knocked out. Yeah, and it's also possible, too, because every year a team that's not supposed to leap into the top three or four or five leaps into the top three or four or five, pushing somebody else down. So that happens almost every season. Hopefully that doesn't happen for the Spurs. But once again, <laughs> take solace. Take solace, Spurs fans. You still have a 14% chance. It's still there. You didn't lose it. It's just it took a little baby hit. Now, yeah. you, know, you talked about the worst – Case scenario of that being picked seven. Now that we've had time to think about it, digest how these college kids are looking. Is seven still bad position wise, or is it still salvageable if the worst case scenario plays out? It's still salvageable, but the problem is, is that it's going to be a player that is going to be a project for two, three, mm-hmm. four seasons to come. Right. Uh, if you're picking on the top three, uh, obviously the top three players are Wemby. Scoot Henderson and Brandon Miller. Those three players will start day one, will contribute from day one. And I would suspect that all three of those players will be first team all NBA rookies next year. Mm-hmm. When it comes to four through 10, you are in the Jeremy Sohan range of players where it could be somebody that develops into mm-hmm. a star. It is somebody who could develop into a good number one or number two option but you're not going to know for three or four seasons. That's the problem. Now, there are some other players out there that might be able to contribute right away. It's just whether or not their ceiling is as high. Uh, Kansas's uh, Grady Dick, for example, uh, is something I enjoyed uh, watching to play, but I don't know how high his ceiling is. The thing about him, though, is that his floor is so high. Mm -hmm. You know he's going to be a good NBA player. It's just whether or not he's going to be a star player in the NBA. So uh, at number seven, who would you be getting? Okay. So Scoot, Wemby, Brandon Miller off the board. board, Amen Thompson's off the board. Osar, yeah. Osar is probably off the board as well. So now you're looking at a uh, Jairus Walker, uh, Cam Whitmore out of Villanova. Uh, You might be looking at at one of the guards from Arkansas. Uh, You might be looking at Grady Dick from Kansas. Uh, All of them have a lot of upside but they're all projects still. And, and do you think the, the Spurs team can handle a project player? Maybe in the short term versus long term, not necessarily a draft and stash, not necessarily a Lucas Samanich where you give them two, three years to do something. I think they could afford maybe a one-year project on a fast track. I think that's doable. Yeah, I can I can see where you're going with that. Um, it's just, it depends on the position that you'd, you'd be doing this project on. Uh, I think it's more difficult to be a project as guard uh, because when you're playing as a combo guard or you're playing as a point or a shooting guard, um, the shooting comes naturally, uh, but the leadership, the the pushing the ball up and down the court, the yeah. the the uh, ability to to know where your teammates are going to be, that takes some time. I think the players that might be able to go be able to go after year one would be a player that plays uh, post up. Uh, mm-hmm. Somebody who plays a, a, a big position. So I'm looking at like Taylor Hendricks from UCF, uh, Cam Whit- Whitmore from Villanova, uh, Jaros Walker, the power forward from Houston. Those are the kind of players where they may not have the highest of ceilings, but you know you can play them day one. You know you can give them 15 to 20 minutes and right. you're going to get some production out of them. Uh, will they mature in one more season to become a uh, a building block of the team? You know, that's... That's going to be all on them. Yeah. Yeah. Look, look, if they fall into the Jeremy Sohan range, as you mentioned right now, he I mean, that's not terribly bad. I mean, Sohan really uh, had a quite uh, really good rookie season. And I'm expecting more out of him next season. But as far as the draft odds slash coin flip, take a deep breath, Spurs fans. It's okay. It's okay. It took a baby hit, not a major hit. Spurs still have a 14% chance to win it all. And get Wimby. I, by the way, before we go to break, Jimenez, are you surprised that Scoot is kind of slipping from number two spot? Not necessarily a lock anymore. 
Uh, I'm not surprised at all. Uh, in yeah. fact, this is something that I kind of uh, predicted uh, yeah. as the season went along for Alabama because, you know, Brandon Miller, you look at a guy who is 6'9", uh, somebody who can knock down threes at a 40% clip, uh, someone who can play defense, who can pass the ball. Uh, I think that when it when when you look at the two versus three, Scoot versus Brandon Miller, I think for some teams it's going to be based on need. If they mm-hmm. already have their point guard of the future, then they go Brandon Miller, and then yeah. vice versa. If you if you have your 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 front court set, but you need the guard, you go after Scoot. Yeah. Um, for so many for so long, it was under the impression of well, there's only two really good players in this draft, and then you have some uh, some potential with the others. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Brandon Miller, even though he wet the bed, got hurt during the uh, tournament, uh, is still a player that you can look at his resume. You can take a look at, you know, 25, 30 other games that he played mm-hmm. and go, okay, we know what yeah. we're getting with this guy. Right. Yeah, at least absolutely. He is Michael Jimenez of San Antonio Sports Star, co-host of Jimenez and Spence. Follow him on Twitter at Mike ESPN. I say when we get back, we're going to shift gears and talk about these Spurs. Well, they got the green light. They are approved to go play other home games outside of San Antonio. Again, we're going to talk about that. Is that a sign of bad things to come? Or this is just basically the new normal right here on Lockdown Spurs. Hey, but I want to talk to you about eBay Motors. Look, for a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure every part you need fits right the first time around. Just add your ride to my garage and look for the green check to know the part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game. So when you shop eBay Motors, well, you could be just great knowing that with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride eligible items only, exclusion supply. And also I want to talk to you about Mudslingers, my favorite place in San Antonio to get myself a cup of coffee or something even stronger. If you stayed up late to catch the end of a game, you need a quick pick-me-up, go to Mudslingers drive through Coffee out in San Antonio. It's locally owned an independent coffee shop, and they're proud to make delicious coffee for our community. They do it fast and friendly so you can get on with your day. Whether you're in mood for a latte, cold brew, or a red hot infused lightning bolt. Hey, Jimenez, I had that recently. <laughs> I recommend you get that one. I swear. I took three sips and woke up like, and I know you're busy. I, I think you should go get one. You, I think you will like it. We'll it would get it the out. Jimenez stamp of approval. Yeah. They have drinks for every taste. They also have a wide selection of dairy alternatives, low-calorie options, even caffeine-free drinks for those who want to take it easy. Go to Mudslingers drive through Coffee for a tasty and convenient caffeine fix located at 2404 Thousand Oaks Drive near 281 and 1604. Open every day from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Life is too short for bland coffee. So, Jimenez, here we go again. The Spurs will be playing games, home games, outside of the city of San Antonio moving forward for at least the next two seasons. Uh, yesterday or a couple of days ago, the uh, Bear County Commissioner's Court, for those who are not from San Antonio, they're basically the, the, the court you, the Spurs have to go to because they have a lease with the county. Uh, and I believe uh, the Bear County runs the AT&T Center. So they got to ask permission. So the Spurs got it. They went. They said thumbs up. They are likely going to play in Austin two games and an international game. That's a little different this time around, he meant his, It's not necessarily Mexico City. It could be somewhere else. Mike, I got to ask you, my first thought was, okay, fine. It it was worked out great in Austin. It it was success in in Mexico. But why does this feel like the boiling pot getting a little hotter, a little hotter, a little hotter, makes you know the frog is cooked and the R word pops up again, relocation. Should that even cross our minds or not at all? You know, I kind of feel the opposite, man. I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah. You know, I was very much uh, somebody who was overly concerned about the whole process and them playing in Austin. Yeah. And I think that this time around, the Spurs did it a much better way. When they approached Commissioner's Court, notice who was there. R.C. Buford was there. Yeah. And remember the last time 
that uh, they try to uh, ask for permission to play games outside of the AT&T Center. Uh, Nelson Wolf was one of the ones that kind of mm-hmm. lashed out and said, where is Pop? Where is RC? Where are the senior executives of the Spurs? And this time around, to see RC there and talk about the development that they're doing in San Antonio, how much money they're plugging into their new facility, mm-hmm. uh, and to give the reassurance of, hey, look, we're not asking for any more games. In fact, we're asking for a few, one fewer game outside of the AT&T Center. Keep in mind, the Spurs had three games outside of San Antonio last year, mm-hmm. two in Austin, one in Mexico City. Uh, but this time around, uh, Instead of having a game at the Alamo Dome and having mm-hmm. just 37 games being played at the AT&T, they're going to have 38. One thing I found interesting, though, was uh, one of the members of the commissioner's court saying you should also consider, instead of going two games in Austin, maybe having one of those games in the Valley. And I think that's an excellent idea yeah, to play a game in McAllen or Edinburgh or Brownsville, well, well, uh, well, one of those thing. places. Well, here's the thing. The the Austin Spurs already did that in Laredo. Yeah. yeah, the Austin Spurs have already played a game in Laredo, Texas. It was a success. It was the first time a regular season G League game was played outside of uh, Cedar Park, Texas, and this in Laredo. And another point that they brought up in court was one of the commissioners felt that the Rio Grande Valley tends to be Houston Rockets country. Yeah, in a weird way. Yeah, in his opinion, he felt that the RGV was all about the Rockets. And I get it because Houston does have the RGV Vipers as their G League affiliate. So a lot of the Houston players go there. But I always felt the Valley was Spurs country. What Did I miss something, Michael? No, I, I don't think you did because uh, I think that the fact that they have their minor league team there, their, their G League team uh, playing in – the Valley means a lot. I mean, you know, San Antonio is trying to get Austin to be fans of the team. Well, we have all the Austin Spurs there. So it would make sense that the Houston Rockets who go to the Valley and spend time and money and resources over there uh, would get some headway with the fans over there. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that the Spurs could go and swoop in and steal some of those fans. Uh, we are the closest NBA franchise to the Valley. Uh, so I think that it'd be a good idea. I think the Spurs dominate Corpus Christi, by the way. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I spend time in Corpus Christi. I always see a bunch of Spurs gear, Spurs mm-hmm. advertising, billboards, bumper stickers, things like that. I think that we dominate Eagle Pass and Laredo. Uh, but the Valley, RGV, being Houston Rockets territory is interesting because you can't, you have to get through San Antonio to get yeah, there exactly. for the most part. Yeah. Uh, so... Um, that's that's wild. That's wild. But maybe playing an actual NBA game over there would turn heads. I mean, it did in Austin. It did. Yeah, it did. Yeah. It, look, I, I think the Austin game or games will remain moving forward, Jimenez. Yeah. But it, but it's interesting to see if they do split it. I think if their goal, Jimenez, and we trust them, if we do, I know some Spurs fans don't trust this still, but nevertheless, if the goal is to spread the name, open the brand, be ambassadors for the city of San Antonio, then you you then that's a smart move. Okay, also we gave you two this past season. Now we're gonna give you one, and here you go, RGV. We give you one. I wouldn't be surprised down the road we find out the Spurs might play a game in El Paso. I wouldn't be surprised yeah. at all. And I think that'll be a smart move, Jimenez. No, and I, I wouldn't necessarily be against that. Um, I just don't want there to be too many games. I, I'm happy with the fact that the Spurs, you know, Pandora's box was opened when mm-hmm. when Commissioner's Court allowed them to play in Austin, right? Uh, that was not going to be a one-time deal because, you know, the Spurs got a taste of Austin, Austin to the Spurs, yeah. and that's never going to go away. It just is what it is from here until forever. I I cannot see another year where we have 41 games in San Antonio. Don't care how successful this team mm-hmm. is. What the Spurs are trying to do is regionalize the team and regionalize the fan base. So I understand what they're doing. Going all the way to El Paso, though, might be a little bit far, man. I mean, it's 560 miles uh, away. Uh, but that is an untapped fan base. Who exactly mm-hmm. does El Paso cheer for? Do they right. cheer for the Denver Nuggets? Is that the closest team? Is it the uh, Oklahoma yeah. City Thunder? Is it the yeah. Phoenix Suns? So, you know, that is an untapped 
resource their uh, fans. I mean, the number of people in the El Paso area is pretty significant amount. Mm -hmm. uh, I find this to be all intriguing and fascinating what the Spurs are trying to do. And, tr and I wonder what, you know, let's say that they do make Austin a big fan base and then yeah. they make McAllen and Harlingen and Edinburgh mm -hmm. and Brownsville fans of this team. And they already have Corpus. Um, how do they keep spinning the plates to satisfy all of them? Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, maybe uh, training right. camps held uh, in the Valley. I mean, right. they did that, it before in Austin, you know, years ago. That is a large area there. I mean, think but then why it. would you? Do, but then why would you do that if you're just going to break ground on a new facility? Then say, okay, thanks, cool facility, but we're going to play our training camp. It's going to be in in uh, in Laredo. I mean, it's, it's kind of feel like a waste of money there. But yeah, who knows? It's going to be interesting to see what they do with this uh, situation. Hey, we're not done talking about this topic. When we get back, we're going to wrap it, this up. I have a big question for Jimenez to ask him about the Spurs playing in other cities and much, much more right here on Lockdown Spurs. Hey, once again, thanks for making Lockdown Spurs your first listen each and every day. You are the everydayers. Tomorrow on the show, stay tuned. We have a good guest, great topics. So you definitely want to tune in for tomorrow's Locked On Spurs. Hey, once again, I want to remind you about Mudslinger's Coffee. I'm telling you right now, it is really good. You're going to have anything you want on the menu. The dairy alternatives, that Red Bull Lightning a drink is awesome. If you stayed up late the night before, you want to get a good pick-me-up or just keep on going with your day, you want to go to Mudslinger's drive through Coffee right now. 2404 Thousand Oaks Drive. You want to go there right now. It's a, it's a quick, convenient drive through Friendly staff. Smiles all around uh, from just your basic uh, pour to something really fancy uh, from the, that Red Bull infused drink and many, many others. You want to go there. They have new tumblers. They got T-shirts. They got it all over at Muslingers right here in San Antonio. Support your local community, San Antonio, 2404 Thousand Oaks Drive. Muslingers Coffee. You want to go there right now. Autobots, roll out. We're back right here on Locked On Spurs with Michael Jimenez of San Antonio Sports Star. Follow him on Twitter at Mike ESPNSA. Jimenez, I found out that you actually, get this, saw a movie that another fan didn't see. And I, that blind, you actually saw uh, Blood In, Blood Out. And I'm proud of you for that. But I was shocked, right? <laughs> Another Spurs fan didn't watch that. And I was like, wait a minute. Jimenez saw a movie that somebody else should have watched, and they didn't watch it, but Jimenez got one up. So kudos to you, Jimenez. Now, mind you, when I watched that movie, you know, I watched that movie because I was doing my movie reviews for halftime last year, and it was one of the ones the that people wanted those. me to watch. Yeah, I missed it. It was good. I liked it. I, I really liked that movie. I was surprised because – uh, I didn't think that I would. I thought that maybe it'd be too old or stale or uh, it wouldn't be mm -hmm. as good 30 years later. But uh, Blood In, Blood Out was really good. Oh, yeah, it really, really was. Hey, uh, you know, to wrap up this conversation we're having about the Spurs playing in other cities, uh, I want to talk about Austin again. Austin seems to be good, is going to be either the, the city that's going to get one or both moving forward. Do you think the city of Austin should chip in with cost too? If we're going to be sharing this team, shouldn't they foot a little bit of the bill? Why does it seem that the Spurs are rolling out the carpet for Austin? Shouldn't it be the other way around or at least meet you in the middle? No, because we're trying to attract them. This is kind of mm -hmm. like a first date. Uh, you know, you don't want to split the check on the first date. Right. And I think the Spurs going out there, and it, it's, it was tone deaf last year. And I'm hopeful that the Spurs do a better job of, of attracting other areas, whether it be RGV or Austin, that they do it in a way that's more tactful and respectful of the fans they have in the 210-830, the area that has supported them for 50 years. Um, I understand why they're doing what they're doing, but man, uh, save some of that effort and love for home. You know, I save know, some I of know. those parties and some of those meet and greets for home. And mm -hmm. uh, because I'm sure a lot of Spurs fans here would want to go and attend those events, would want to meet the players out on the street corner like Jeremy Sohan right. and Trey Jones and all them right. signing autographs there on mm -hmm. 5th and 6th Street or wherever they were. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I think the Spurs have set the tone in a better way for the upcoming season. Uh, them not asking for any more games than last year, 
uh, was a big thing for me. And mm. at least we know what they're going to do the next two seasons, as opposed to being one of those situations where you're like, okay, what are they going to ask for at the end of this year? What mm. are they going to ask for next? What are they going to ask for next? At least they've mapped out the next two years so that there's no surprises. That's another thing I really liked about what they did. Here's something they can do. Maybe have the Alamo Dome as a yearly event. Maybe not necessarily to that level. Right. Maybe bring in the curtain. Because remember, the Alamo Dome reunion game was the entire dome. was being, And it was an awful game to watch in person. Yeah, 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 yeah. The game itself on the court was horrible. But for nostalgia purposes, it was a blast. So they used, they utilized the entire seating capacity of the Alamo Dome. Now, obviously, you know, they broke the record. But maybe you can just give fans that who never experienced the Alamo Dome game the Alamo Dome experience with the curtain. Cut it in half, make it go back to that 30,000 seating capacity. Perhaps that could be something fun they can keep on going moving forward. I don't know how feasible that is, but I should, it should cost way less, right? It's for transporting the court, renting out a gym in Austin, transportation for the players, whatnot. So, but you know, that's just my idea. But yeah, it looks like this is going to be yeah. the new normal, Jimenez. This is going to be the new normal. Yeah. If we're going to do the Alamo Dome, for a game, if we're going to be doing these Austin games, uh, mm-hmm. you and I have talked about this, and this was something that uh, James Pledger brought up to me over at San Antonio Sports Star, uh, which is have these games, as opposed to the final couple of games of April, mm-hmm. have these games during the rodeo road trip so yeah. that they're at least in the area being home as opposed to being gone, you know, yeah. four or five weeks in a row. That's what I would want to see out of these games in Austin or the Valley or wherever they may be outside of the AT&T Center. Yeah, and then, like, I mean, it was sure maybe the games were unimportant, but you know, to see the Spurs not close the season at the AT and T was kind of weird. I, I think it should have been the other way around. I think you close your home games in home in San Antonio versus outside of San Antonio and Austin. Perhaps that's something they can tweak moving forward. He is Michael Jimenez of San Antonio Sports Star. Follow him on Twitter at Mike ESPN SA. Aside from having, uh, you know, your colleagues light matches when you go to that studio, he meant is, uh, what's, go- <laughs> what's going on with halftime? What's going on uh, with the star? You guys are pumping out a lot of great shows uh, recently. Yeah, you know, I'm back from Austin. You know, last week I was able to go over there and uh, get a prize from the Texas Association of Broadcasters. dude. Congratulations. That's right. It, it was uh, rated the, the, or it was rated the best Sports yes. talk radio show in Texas. That was a nice Woo-hoo. honor to get. And don't get me wrong. I don't think that my show is better than R and R. My show is better than the Blitz. We all have great shows, but mine was chosen. Uh, and I just, um, we're having fun. I mean, we're trying to find our way. We're, we're getting better as the weeks go on. I have a new co host this year in Tim Spence, and uh, the show is evolving. Uh, we do a lot of sports talk. We're starting to get back into some pop culture. I'm surprised, by the way. You did not ask me for a letter grade on Super Mario Brothers, which I you know did what? see this past weekend. I because I haven't seen it, but I can tell you, I know the gist of it. It's basically Mario Kart come to life. That's basically what it is. Mario Party Kart come to life. Yeah, it's it's that's it's pretty much both of them combined. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's all it really is. And no, look, um, I'm always a skeptic when it comes to move, video game movies. Because the the video game genre transferring to the movie has not been great. The recent Mortal Kombat was not that great. Uh, you know, the original Super Mario Brothers back in the, the, oh, the that late was 80s, awful. 90s, horrend- horrendous. Uh, the Resident Evil has maybe one or the first two were okay, but after that it was just downhill. Uh, so there hasn't been many great video game movies. Now, on the smaller screen, it's it's been okay. I know this is way out of your league right here, but uh, the, there's a Netflix show I highly recommend everybody to watch. It's called uh, uh, Arcane. It's based off the League of Legends uh, video game. Okay. Outstanding, outstanding crossover from the video game genre to the small screen. And I think that's the best way to do it. Super Mario Brothers, look, I'm hearing good things from the fan voting. I am very, 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 I have a very high bar when it comes to movies i, I they, they gotta knock it out of the park unless it's your first <laughs> time I'll, I'll be forgiving but i'll I, I think that's a movie that i'll wait till it gets streamed i think that i'll watch it when it gets streamed i'm gonna give it a good b plus it was a yeah, good I, movie i can't react because i haven't seen it 
It was a it was a very good movie. It wasn't a great movie. Okay, it wasn't. I don't great. expect it to be like Oscar worthy at all. At all. Well, well, I went in there with very low expectations. Okay, had I gone in there thinking this is going to be the greatest movie of all time, I'd probably be pissed off walking out of Flick's Brew House. <laughs> but uh, when I went in there, I thought to myself, just be okay, just be okay. And I'm going to be honest, the first ten or fifteen minutes, I really wasn't into it because, um, you know, I'm, I'm still kind of wrapping my emotions and my head around some of these characters yeah. like Bowser and Koopa Troopas mm-hmm. and all of those yeah. uh, characters. Um, and then the whole storyline with, with Mario and Luigi, going to be honest with you, really wasn't that into it. Uh, but 15 minutes later, the last hour and 15 minutes of the movie, pretty damn good when it kind, when it kind of uh, turns into a Mario Party, Mario Kart type of thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, I really enjoyed it uh, because I do play those video games uh, with my kids, uh, you know, DK is my guy. Yeah, uh, and uh, they also you know, Seth Rogen, right? He he voiced DK. Seth Rogen played yeah. DK. Uh, uh, Anya Taylor Joy, uh, who we all know from the Queen's Gambit, yeah. uh, she was Princess Peach, uh, and then yeah, Chris Pratt, I believe, was Mario. Right. Uh, so uh, Jack Black was Bowser. Yeah. So a lot of star names out there. Uh, I know Keegan Michael Key is also in the movie uh, as well. So. Uh, I enjoyed it. I mean, it's going to be one of those movies that, you know, when it does come out on streaming, I will watch again because it was entertaining enough. And, uh, you know, these movies are always going to have sequels upon sequels yep. upon sequels. Yep. Yep. Uh, but I'm glad that they finally had a good Super Mario one because that old one from the 90s or the yeah. late 80s, whenever that one came out, was complete garbage. That was horrific. Complete garbage. That was horrific. And, 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 and that, now there's that a had... Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles coming out soon. Right, and then and then that Mario uh, show movie, they had John Leguizamo in it. They had yeah. Dennis Hopper in it. They had oh that that other uh, award winning actor who played the lead character, uh, Mario, uh, uh, something Hop Hoskins, Bob Hoskins played yeah. uh, Mario himself. So it had some star power. But I think, yeah, yeah, that's just a proof right there that majority of video game to movies doesn't work. Another good example. Is Street Fighter, Jean Claude Van Damme? Oh yeah, yeah. Kylie Minogue oh. was in that what movie? Did you know that Kylie Minogue, Dude, that's the singer? Funny, man. That's she funny. Plays, she plays one She's of the soldiers. So hot too. Oh well, have you seen She's the movie? So hot. Have you seen it? Um, it, it's been so long since I've seen it's that. I mean, that's worth a repeat. Probably just thirty years. Her. Just to see her, it's worth a repeat. Uh, I did like Mortal Kombat, the the, the most recent Mortal Kombat that came I out. I didn't. I didn't. Um. Again, it's all about expectations and managing said expectations. I had none going in there, therefore I liked it. <sighs> See, I gotta watch a movie now. See, now I'm getting behind the times now. See, I haven't watched Mario Brothers now. I'm, then you're gonna be what? You haven't watched Mario Brothers, Jeff? Where have you been? That's gonna turn. <laughs> the tables are gonna turn slowly on me, everybody. He is Michael Jimenez of San Antonio Sports Star. Follow him on Twitter at Mike ESPNSA. Check out his show, Jimenez and Spence. Now available on YouTube and Facebook again. Yes, finally back. There. Also on Alexa, too. That's very nice. Oh, look at you. Fancy. You can fancy, say, fancy, Alexa, fancy, play Jimenez and Spence, and it'll come on. I thought you could say, hey, Alexa, play with Jimenez. And then just. <laughs> <laughs> On the next stage. <laughs> yeah, the next phase, yeah. <laughs> hey, thanks for making Lockdown Spurs your first listen each and every day. Available on the iTunes app, iHeart, Ken's 5 Plus app. Pick a platform where you can catch Lockdown Spurs. You are the everydayers. We thank you for coming here on Lockdown Spurs every single day. So for Michael Jimenez, I am Jeff Garcia. We're putting a lock on this episode of Lockdown Spurs. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.